Everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with Killer Sites. So in this quick little video blog, I want to talk about web frameworks, what they are. I'm going to give you a couple examples of, of some popular web framework, frameworks that are out there and, um, and why you should use them. So a web framework is just basically a bunch of code put together into libraries that you then can use to drop into your websites and they really simplify the web design process. So to skip ahead, you should use web frameworks. Now, there are a lot of them out there, and uh, some of them are complementary, some of them compete, uh, some of them overlap in terms of the functionality that they provide. So keep that in mind. So let's actually look at a couple of popular ones that are out there now, and let's see what we got here. So probably the most popular one at this point in time is something called Bootstrap. Here it is. And basically, this is a framework made, of a Java, made up of JavaScript and CSS, and it uh, allows you to create responsive websites, amongst other things. But that's the most important thing uh, aspect of this framework, in my opinion. It allows you to easily create responsive websites. So what's a responsive website? A responsive website is a website that, move, that resizes itself, it responds to the size of the device and the screen that happens to be viewing the website. So if you look here on my my smartphone, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, okay. So this is a very old smartphone. So you see, this is what I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but this is a studio. This is Studio Web, and you see that the screen, the whole site has responded and reflows, so it reads pretty nicely inside of this uh, this phone. It's pretty good. And uh, if I flip it over, it resizes itself again as well. So it's kind of cool. And if you look at the site, I'll just pull it up, pull it on, uh, Studio Web. So you look at the site here, this is how it is in full screen. And you notice that you have no menu here on the side. And well, let me just resize it for you. So this is built with Bootstrap. So you're going to see the site will resize based on uh, how much real estate it has. You see how the, this there's no button here. Well, now watch what happens. This button appears and it becomes a drop down menu. This is all provided to us, for us rather, by the Bootstrap framework. So everything resizes, the images resize. It takes care of all that. All things flow. If we watch the two, the pictures of the two guys here, they, uh, they, they get stacked, right? And that's all a function of, uh, of Bootstrap. So that's just one framework. You have another framework, very popular. Some people would have called this is jQuery, one of the fundamental um, frameworks or libraries. A lot of people say, no, it's a library. And a lot of other frameworks actually use jQuery. For instance, Bootstrap uses jQuery in the background. And this is another library, but this is a JavaScript library, library that really simplifies JavaScript and provides a whole bunch of UI widgets as well. It's very, very powerful. That's just another one. Here's another one, AngularJS. This is one that um, it makes, it allows you to create, uh, to really enhance, excuse me, the functionality of your form, your HTML form. So it looks more like something, something like a web form, which is a Microsoft.net thing. Basically, it allows you to easily make uh, your web apps act more like rich client like normal desktop apps I won't get into here this is not a uh, course on angular and there are many more so here's another javascript library react this is a library for creating user interfaces it, again it, it, it competes with uh i guess uh, bootstrap to a certain extent i haven't used it my friend of mine a friend of mine who's showing me this recently anyway i just want to show you here's another foundation this one's a direct competitor to bootstrap the most advanced responsive front-end framework I, I don't know if this one's any better or not. You know, some people will prefer this one. Some people will prefer Bootstrap. It's hard to say at this point, but I know that Bootstrap is far, far and away much more popular. Now, here's another framework, but this is a JavaScript framework, but it doesn't work inside the browser. It's actually Node.js. It's actually a server-side uh, framework. It's actually there to uh, allow you to use JavaScript to write JavaScript on the server. And it's kind of like a replacement for PHP, although you can use it beside PHP or Ruby and any of these other competitors. Anyway, you got, you got the idea. Web frameworks, again, they're there to simplify the process uh, because they provide all this 
boilerplate code, all this structural code that you as a web developer shouldn't really be writing. You should be writing your app. And uh, with a framework like Bootstrap, any others, they take care of browser incompatibility issues. So you may have to do uh, something in IE and something else for Chrome and something else in Firefox to make your layout work. But Bootstrap takes care of all that for you. And that's the way it should be. So with all these frameworks, and there are many more, by the way, which ones do you choose? Which Do you have to learn them all? What do you do as a web developer? Ah, you don't have to learn them all. And I've seen this before in the Java world back in the late 90s, early 2000s. We had the same type of thing happen. We had many, many, many different frameworks out there to choose from. And a lot of them were competing as well. And why do you have all these competing frameworks? Sometimes it's for financial reasons. Sometimes one group of nerds feel that it, something should be done one way and another group of nerds feel that it should be done the other way. It's kind of like bootstrap and foundation are very much competing with each other. I can't say which one is better. And from my experience, though, I have to say, in most situations, usually, usually these frameworks are pretty much neck and neck. Meaning that, yeah, in some ways, Bootstrap might be better than Foundations, and Foundations, in some ways, might be better than Bootstrap. So which one should you, you choose? Generally speaking, in this, you have very specialized uh, a very special case, a very special website where you, you, you know that foundation will be much better. General, generally speaking, I would be going with the most popular ones simply because they, they will be most accepted and the most popular ones tend to survive. Although um, that's not always the case. You know, things will come in and out of fashion, even major technologies like Flash. Flash used to be ubiquitous, used to be everywhere. Now it's, it's pretty much a niche product. Um, so I would choose the big ones. So today in 2014, um, in October, late October, it's Bootstrap and jQuery are my first two. I would first learn Bootstrap, then learn a bit of jQuery. And I'm not saying you have to become an expert, but just know your way around them and maybe a little Angular JS. After that, you know, it's up to you really. If you got these three, uh, you're pretty well set up. Again, you don't have to be an expert. Just know your way around them a little bit so you can leverage them. Or maybe if a project comes up, you, you know, okay, Angular could help us here or jQuery could help us here. What I have found, what we're finding, is that we're using Bootstrap for everything now, whether it be webmentor.org uh, or whether it be studioweb.com. We are using Bootstrap because it just really makes web UI creation, creating these flexible, responsive websites, very easy to build. So from the perspective of an old time web programmer such as myself, man, it's so much easier today. So yes, after you understand your basic HTML and your CSS, your CSS3, HTML5, you should get into these uh, some of these web frameworks. You don't have to learn them all, but I would definitely start with Bootstrap and then move into jQuery. Yeah. Um, let me just finish off this video with, I'll take a look at this. This is something that's really freaked me out lately. Something called a, a super cluster. Now, each of these little white spots here represents a galaxy. Not a solar system, but a galaxy. Now, our galaxy is, is, is within this red spot. It's actually much smaller than that, but I, you, know, it's, you know, look at all these other galaxies. And this is actually uh, a map that I think it was NASA. These scientists were able to actually accurately map out uh, these super clusters. Basically, a super cluster is a, a cluster of galaxies, a whole bunch of galaxies, with each of these dots being galaxies. Look at how small the Milky Way is relative to all these other galaxies. And then you can see the on the edge of this photo, you have all these other super clusters over here, a couple more here, one here, here. Uh, you can see how trivial Earth is, our existence is, relative to the uh, rest of this uh, universe. I'm trying to launch this other photo. The bloody thing would do it. There we go. Just to give you an idea, this is fascinating to me. So you got the planets Earth here, and then you can see uh, our sun and Earth here relative. You know, This is all, I think, accurate in terms of space. 
And you can see our solar system here, right here, relative to uh, neighboring uh, solar systems. And then you see uh, where we are, so you can't even see us, the speck here inside the Milky Way galaxy. And here you see the Milky Way galaxy relative to other galaxies. We zoom out even more. Each of these white spots are galaxies. There's a super cluster again, we saw the close up before. And this is an observable universe. This to me is fascinating. And uh, yeah, so just to put some perspective on things, yeah, bootstrap is important and uh, web development is important, but you know, just think of the super clusters.